Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'll be researching into existing film trailers. This video is actually the first part of trailer research that I've completed, but there will be several other videos to follow this particular one. The trailers range in how recent they are, and by this I mean I've chosen trailers that were released at different times. And in this video I'll be conducting research into the second trailer for the new film Suicide Squad. Is this the real life? Let me have you, Donald, please. I want to assemble a task force of the most dangerous people on the planet. They're bad guys. Worst of the worst. Too late. Open the gate! My time is come. Since she was done, my Was this a uh, cheerleading trials? Hi, boys. Goodbye, everybody. Deadshot. Guy shoots people. He's a crocodile, and he eats people, burns people. You're possessed by a witch, and she's just crazy. What was that? I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not what they really said. This is the deal. You're going somewhere very bad. Whoa. Do something that'll get you killed. Let's save the world. I can't wait to show you my toys. Let's do something fun. Seriously, what the hell's wrong with you people? We're bad guys. It's what we do. Nothing really matters to me. So, as you've just seen, this trailer starts with a tilt down of what appears to be a maximum security prison. Already at this point, the audience have been introduced to one location of the film. However, this shot only lasts for around three seconds, so as you can imagine, the audience do not have a lot of time to actually process what they've just seen, before they are introduced to a new location. The camera shot for this location starts after a quick cut to black that lasts again three seconds. This camera shot is actually a zoom out that is focusing on a prison door whereby an armed guard is standing in front of it. Unlike the first, this camera shot lasts long enough for the audience to process that there is a face at a window located in the middle of the door and that the guard proceeds to slam shut. After being introduced to these two locations, another cut to black is used to then introduce the first character that is seen. This character is Harley Quinn. They show this character by using a low angle shot to show her reading a book and drinking. This portrays to the audience that this character probably has some sort of power or strength because Due to the angle of the shot, the audience perceive themselves as being below her. This shot, as well as being a low angle, is also a medium shot, which stops the audience from seeing which location Harley Quinn is in. This is until the camera cuts to a long shot in which the location can clearly be seen. She sat on a prison bed in an orange jumpsuit. This means that the audience perception of this character will change, as they would have originally thought she was a powerful character, but due to her now obvious location, it is clear to the audience that in actual fact, she is in a place of very little power or strength. The next character that is shown in this trailer is Deadshot. This shot fully shows the character's full face and their facial expressions. Due to the lighting of this shot, the location of the character is still unclear to the audience. The next shot that we see of this character is shot from behind. In this, the audience can see that in actual fact, this character is in the same orange jumpsuit they have recently seen Harley Quinn in. And this will cause the audience to make a subconscious connection between the two of the characters, possibly placing them in the same location at the same time in their heads. The final shot we see of this character is again a different angle. We see the side of the character this time, who is looking towards the sunlight from a window. 
This could connote to the audience that he is perhaps seeking forgiveness or trying to leave a very dark past behind him. The next few camera shots that the audience see show several different characters in very dimly lit locations. A fade to black is then used to show the next shot, which I think almost splits the trail up into sections. Possibly the first part was showing the antagonist, and this next part that's about to start is going to show the protagonist. Again, a zoom is used to introduce two new characters who appear to be in a civilised restaurant, showing that they are clearly above the other characters that have already been seen in this trailer. After this, the audience are shown two of the production companies who have produced this film, Warner Brothers and DC Comics. The next few shots are very full of drama, and the audience see a lot of violence in a very short space of time. The violence, however, is only towards the characters that the audience were first introduced to at the start of this trailer. After this, it all seems to take a calmer turn. This is also where most of the dialogue is heard. During this, a character that the audience has not yet seen is talking about what I can only presume is the characters that we've already seen. He's also looking at what appear to be case files or medical files on each of the characters to gain more knowledge about them. As this mysterious character is naming all of these characters' powers, the audience can see a preview of each of these people using their powers. However, when it gets to Harley Quinn, the music lowers and she almost takes over the trailer until it then switches back to Deadshot. And once again, the music starts up and the action slash violence is once again shown until the audience is introduced to a whole new character. After its introduction, the music in the background appears to change, which I think is a way to show the audience that this particular character is a lot different to the several characters that the audience have already seen several times on the screen. After this song change, the next lot of action that is seen almost coincides with the song. Every time a gun fires, there'll be another beat added to the music. This, in my opinion, adds tension to the trailer for the audience, as they'll be seeing a load of different actions in very short spaces of time. This in a way will flash onto their screens and will imprint onto their mind. Whilst this is happening, every so often the screen will go black and a word will be displayed. These words almost make up a sentence if you were to read them together. Worst heroes ever. This particular trailer uses the music very well in my opinion, as every so often when there are several new beats added to the music, the clips that are shown are all edited to make sure that several different characters all do the same thing at the same time with the music. After all this has happened, titles appear on the screen and the actor's name are also shown. Once this has been shown on the screen for around 5 seconds, it then switches to the release date and what kind of platforms the film will be available on. I really like how this trailer coincides with the music that they have chosen. In my opinion, it's very successful. This is because the first edition of the trailer was released at Comic-Con, and as Suicide Squad was already a comic, it already has a large fan base and will therefore have a really anticipated arrival when it is finally released. Another thing that is good about this trailer is the fact that all of the text that is seen on the screen uses the same font and colours, which shows that it's all from the same trailer. These colours are blue, pink, orange and green. And in my opinion, these colours almost resemble the colour of Harley Quinn's hair and the costumes of all the other characters that the audience have been shown. And that's about all I've got really. So thank you for watching this video and until next time, I shall see you, well, very soon. Or you'll hear me very soon. Goodbye!